Uh, we have our new superintendent in attendance, Rob Manahan. Rob, you want to uh, share with people a little bit about, uh, well, people have probably read about you in the newspaper. You're a celebrity Hopefully, already. Rather, yeah. yeah. Hopefully it won the uh, jail release papers. Yeah, that's right. No, we, we, we've got Rob had already done the back, or Robbie did, did the background check. Yeah, he did. Okay, good. Um, yeah, this is my, uh, starting my ninth year as a superintendent. I was uh, a few years out in the Lake Chelan School District over in Chelan, and then a few years over in the Peninsula School District, which is Gate Harbor area. Um, you know, kind of grew up over in the North Shore School District, went through there from about fourth grade on, actually born in New York, came out this way when I was about 10, and uh, went through that district and headed out to Washington State University. Go Cougs! All right, I like to hear. I did end up getting a doctor at EDA, so I got both cards playing there in case there's any uh, need to throw either one of those out. But, uh, yeah, so I'm looking forward to it. It's a, a fantastic district to step into, and uh, you know, my hope is to not do anything to make it uh, go down. So, <laughs> <laughs> Joe, had it, uh, Joe had it in great shape. Well, There's already a mess, uh, just fantastic people on the team. So uh, I'm excited to get started. I've been here since, uh, I guess I started work about four days before my contract, which was July 1st. So I've been here maybe a couple weeks off and on and uh, starting to get to know where we need to go, what we need to do, and how we're going to get there. So you know, I guess I have an opportunity on the second to maybe give a greater conversation around this? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And we're hoping to uh, get Rob transferred from the Gig Harbor uh, Rotary. If we don't embarrass ourselves, they'll transfer up here. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you. Great. Very good. And we have, I, I'll wait and uh, let Luke be introduced uh, as speaker. Uh, but we also have a guest, uh, his compadre in crime, Rob Watton, who's here. Uh, Rob is, uh, is, is the uh, manager of the Umquest store here in town, or in, in North Bend. Uh, most of you probably know Rob, um, but he's, he just arrived back from vacation. Rob, anything you want to say about yourself that uh, we don't already know? Oh my gosh, I didn't realize that. No, I just came to listen to Luke. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, you're here. Uh, good morning. Thank you for having Luke and me here today. Uh, Umpqua Bank is very excited to uh, be helping Luke with this uh, this new project, and uh, Steve and I have shared a, I, I've shared a little bit about the plans going forward because there is a part in in this whole innovation center that we'd like for you to be involved with. So um, anyway, thank you very much for having us. Welcome. Uh, as I said, I'll let uh, Luke be introduced when uh, he speaks. Um, that's all I guess this morning. Yeah. Waltz back. Uh -huh. Welcome yeah. back. I, you're kind of a guest. <laughs> yeah. 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 We'll, yes. we'll, 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 we'll hear about your, your trip with Sergeant at Arms. Um, all right. Well, let's move into Sergeant at Arms. And Lori, would you mind handling that for us this morning? Uh, no, not at all. Can you be back, uh, big and no, intimidating? We're going to start, uh, we're gonna start over here. We're going to start right here. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our guests. Um, this reminder this weekend is um, North Bend Block Party, and we got about 70 uh, vendors and everything that's been cool. You have dealership if you have kids or an adult, we're doing tie dye to come and see that. And you know, if you're here next week, because I'm going camping. Not really sure where, because normally we go to Colonial Creek, and there's some new federal regulation that's going to do like. 2020 that all federal parks will be reservation and no longer first come first serve. So we're kind of freaking out at this point because we're a first come first serve kind of people. So um, yeah, so there's only no. part of the part of the parks that want to learn Cascades Highway or it's about maybe 150 sites that are first come. So wow. kind of like the, but we'll figure it out. We'll find places we have to get organized. Yeah. Yeah, it's supposed to be 89 degrees and between 89 to 95 next week. So yeah. I'm on well, the mosquitoes ought to be hopping. <laughs> Jonas? Uh, welcome to our guest. And uh, just a, a public service announcement. On Friday, next Friday, the Chamber is having their golf tournament uh, down at the Mount Si. It'll be a lot of fun. Uh, I think Kelly is actually uh, going to be sponsoring. It's a Happy Gilmore theme, and she has the hole. The hole where you have to run up to hit the ball like in Happy Gilmore. So oh, yeah. we could definitely use a few more folks if anybody's interested in joining that. Um, just go to the chamber. There's a website. Click the link. Bam. And then 
Don't do that with one of your new clubs. No. <laughs> no, I've got the hockey stick. You have no. oh, an actual hockey stick? I have an actual Okay, back over here. So I'm doing mine today in honor of my guy, Charlie. He turned 3-8 on Tuesday. We're having a big nice. bash at the ranch in Easton this weekend with my whole family. So he's, you know, for Charlie, for those of you who don't know him, he's a young man with Down syndrome. His birthday is a national holiday. Happy birthday. That's a big deal. I love him. Well, hello, sir. I love these. Glad to be back from Switzerland and Sweden. It's been an extra day in Iceland because we missed a connecting flight. Got to walk around the town. Um, yeah, it's just wonderful to uh, come back. And I guess I missed a little bit of something that happened, but uh, I told my wife we had a new president. And got all excited and I said, no, 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 rotor. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, I have a present for anyone who can answer this question. Well, first person to answer the question. What's the second largest city by population in Sweden? Yes. I'll quick Google it somewhere. Oh, I'm sorry. Right. No idea. No idea. Okay, what's the largest? Stockholm. Stockholm. Home. Stockholm. Home. Stockholm. Home. Right, Stockholm. Who said Stockholm? Perfect. There you go. You can get have a chocolate. Who said the second? Stockholm's the second? No, Stockholm's number one. Oh, yeah. So second is Gothenburg. Oh, yeah. That's oh, darn it. That's your sure Batman. Batman. You should have Batman. That's not Tim Oh, that's Gothenburg. Sorry. Wait. Oh, that's super good. Yeah. I'm American. Well, that is Sweden. Yeah. That's a tough one, though. Yeah. Well, oh, it's yeah. not quite Switzerland, but I'm back from California. Yeah, it's been very good. Are you jet, jet lag too? Mm. I'm, I'm, uh, what's the word for uh, jet lag after driving for two days? Oh. <laughs> My wife hates to fly, so oh. driving there for over the weekend, driving back over the weekend, oh my gosh. and spending a week there, uh, but we had a chance to meet many, many friends and uh, had fun, so it was all good. Yeah. Nice. What do you got? Officer Bob? How, many, hey, how much do you think back on that? That's a big deal. I, I don't know. <laughs> you should be lucky someone my age has cash. We can reuse those for next time. <laughs> I usually ask yeah, what is that? Like, oh. <laughs> you have you can, more cash. You can miss, it, uh, <laughs> miss a few weeks on that one. Yeah. So, uh, I committed my first international crime this weekend. Whoa, oh, that's pretty cool. awesome. Ooh, you and Interpol? I uh, went up to Canada with, up to Whistler with my, uh... <coughs> Call the fiance. Yeah, say his parents. Oh. Yeah. And you broke the speed limit? What? No, um, <laughs> I get up there and I took the dogs with me and I threw their back in the car. Drove up there. Um, for those of you who don't know, I have two uh, yellow labs and I do a lot of bird training. And <coughs> I have a 22 pistol <laughs> that, that wow. I keep in there for, and it's only blanks in the back, so there's no live ammo. But uh, I get there and I'm going through the bag trying to find like <laughs> another leash. And I was like, Oops. oh, wonderful. <laughs> so I'm already in Canada. So I'm like, all right. So it got torn down in about 60 different pieces and scattered about the car. So <laughs> <laughs> there's no longer a firearm in the car, just all the pieces to one somewhere <laughs> in the car. So, <laughs> made it back through, no problem. <laughs> but it was, a, it was one of those moments where you're just like, oh boy. Well, you've got that honest face when they ask you. It's gonna go one two ways. I know, make it to the next one, thing you can go out of So we're talking all about uh, the, how the day out went. Oh, it was a yeah. great event. Yeah, so Valley Day out. You put a lot of time into that. Valley Day out. Whew. What a depressing day that was. Um, so, so the event was actually really awesome. Uh, Smoking Bear was out there. Uh, the Forest Service joined us, which is kind of cool because that's one of the first times we've ever invited like the federal government to come down. Um, so I don't know if it was Torgerson Park, but I heard Relay for Life had bad numbers this weekend. Yeah. And I don't know if it was just the heat in general that people were like, I'm no. <laughs> so, um, yeah, kind of a disappointing turnout. So, but 
I think next year we're going to look at joining Block Party, uh, where they usually do the car show. Is it? Yes, we're making Block Party larger. <laughs> but doing like a kid's hour and then combining it with that so that you have a captured audience already there and they can deal with all the advertising and all that stuff. So, and the event permit and I don't have to worry about food, getting food donated. Which we had 700 hot dogs donated. I actually ate beef hot dogs. Wow. I don't eat beef. <laughs> yeah, people did comment that they were really cooked well. Yeah. <laughs> Bobby, what, what, what happened to all those hot dogs I delivered back up to the station? Um, they ended up going, so yeah, Relay didn't want them, which was right, I know. different from I the phone to call to that them. I made to them. Right. <laughs> phone call was, yeah, we'll take those. And then evidently when you guys got there, they're like, we don't want these, which is wonderful. Um, they ended up going to... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a a chewing chestnut. <laughs> they they end up going to uh, Trail Youth, so they're gonna make some sort of use for them. I'm not sure. The they buns are probably moldy. What they're doing? They got an event going on now. Like today. Do they? Where they're handing out free hot dogs. Yeah, going on like today. Where they're handing out free hot dogs. They they weren't going to, but they are so, now. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, that was a great event. Though. No, but it was it was pretty nice, pretty good event. Had a had a lot of agency turnout, and uh, yeah, had a lot of volunteer turnout. Well, I think I got Lane from the um, Forest Service to come speak. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, I got a picture with Smokey Bear. Back to the there. program. <laughs> so I'm paying for two weeks. You certainly are, Victoria. Last week, and that was great. Weather was good out there too. It was great. It, um, it was cooler. It did rain one day, but it wasn't as hot. You guys are probably the real thing. I um, got back from Alaska. I was up there for 10 days um, backpacking and hiking and fishing, um, kayaking and all that stuff. So, all the things I like to do. And so, I'm already trying to figure out how I go back because it's just a, the most beautiful place to be. So, I would agree with that. And it's fun to see bear like every day. Every day, yeah. And big ones. So. Yeah. By the way, the breakfast sandwiches are over there if anybody wants breakfast. That's sandwiches. a nice lunch you got. Yeah. All right, back over here. Here. Welcome to our guest. Welcome to our new superintendent. Okay, next. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. 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 No, I don't want to be uh, welcome to our guest in oh well, I mean the, the, the hopefully not. Watch out for that. I know. Yeah, I know. We're it's get my it own bragging right. But I wanted to say that I spent a wonderful weekend with Nancy, Charlotte, and a bunch of other ladies from the bank. We were up in Winthrop. Had a lady weekend. Oh, it was a bunch of Ooh, that was that that was that was that moments of that A lot of dancing. Yeah, she's in a lot of trouble in winter. <laughs> she was in like trouble. <laughs> I know. To our guests. To our guests. Good morning. President, Mr. President. To our, to our guests and Rob, you're taking over a district that has, as I understand it, a project that's uh, for the high school that's on schedule under budget. So. You can do nothing but screw yeah. it up. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, no, well, number one rule of leadership is to get out of the way and let the yeah. other stand right. Well, welcome, right. welcome. We look forward to our speech. Um, before we dive in, yeah, go ahead and get breakfast if you want. Uh, before we get into that, next week is uh, is a club assembly. Uh, it's an important club assembly. It's kind of a uh, kickoff for a number of things. So I, I'm. I'm Really hoping everybody will be able to make it. Um, but in uh, in preview of that, is there any of the committee chairs that have anything they'd like to talk about today in preparation for this? Okay, good. Have breakfast. All right. Our speaker this morning, uh, uh, Luke, has uh, has got some exciting things going on. Um, yeah. Jonas is going to introduce Luke, and I'm looking forward to this. This discussion. You got your gear all ready? Yeah, I'm ready to go. So thanks, Luke. Uh, Luke actually is uh, one of my neighbors and, and a friend over the past three years. Um, words that 
we all use to describe what we do are leadership and, and growth. And, and I think Luke exemplifies like leadership through service and growth through hard work. Luke is a, a I guess you always are an army captain. Yes. Always in the, in the desert storm, so a proud veteran. You, you have a long history of leading companies as a C-suite, chief executive officer, chief operating officer, most recently with uh, Space Labs here. Um, and then one thing that's cool about Luke that, that I knew, but I didn't realize how much how many he'd done, he's authored two series of books, Excellence in Business Leadership, which is uh, functions and methods of growing sub-optimal companies, and uh, which is three books in that series, and then four novels in the Good Fight series, which is about characters who take virtuous and courageous actions. Community service, I would say that Luke is, is very passionate about this. He's engaged in our community. He's a planning commissioner and an economic development commissioner. And I don't know of any other commissions you're on. No, that's super. Okay, well that keeps you busy, I'm sure. Um, I serve on Luke with, on the planning commission and uh, he's always got great ideas. And I think that his values and, uh, are very much aligned with what, what rotaries are and that Leaders through the service that we do. So, thank you. Guys. Thank you. Very nice introduction. So, uh, before I advance slides, I want to mention how I first got to know the Rotary, and I always knew the Rotary was there. I could see the signs on the roads. Uh, but uh, growing up, my my father was like, "It likes a kilometer so on." So I kind of put it in that category. And uh, a few years ago, um, there was a very contentious sales meeting. And, and we were, I don't know if folks are in complex multi-year cells, uh, but I mean, things can really get uh, gummed up on uh, are we adding value and are we really doing things. And somebody stopped the meeting and says, I'm a rotary guy, and I think we should apply the four-way test. First I heard about it, is this truth? And that, that question alone got us in a different path. And then it was like, is this fair to all concerns? And then the third one, and I love that you guys saw that, all, is this going to uh, build a goodwill and friendships, and is it beneficial to all concerned? And uh, I was blown away when I heard that four-way test, because that negotiation that we were wrestling with for a day fell out clean once we got into that. And so what I'm about to talk about it really goes to not only the four-way test, but the last one. It's something that I think is really beneficial uh, for this area, uh, and it's also something that uh, there's a lot of passion around. So um, Snow Valley Innovation Center. Um, I've got the, a few slides here, I think 16 slides. The first 11 I got from Rob Watton, and he actually is the uh, registered agent and on the board of Snow Valley Innovation Center. Um, this is an idea that came up, uh, at least in my mind, about a year ago. Uh, there was a uh, high school student who did some self-harm uh, in my neighborhood, and it, it, just, it just blew my mind. I was just like, are people not aware of what type of environment there is right now? Uh, for example, at the high school, I heard there was a makerspace underway. I mean, there's, there's never been a time in history where somebody can apply the creative mind to do things. And I thought, we need to get the word out. So talked about it for a number of months, presented it actually to the Economic Development Commission, and we realized we had to take uh, a few other steps. Uh, so I founded uh, Snow Valley Innovation, a nonprofit center, uh, and also then later founded uh, Snow Valley Dream Factory, a for-profit center, which, which I currently head. And uh, we got people together, and we tried to find out, is there enough uh, interest to get this going, and we got a real strong positive response. Again, it's an honor to be here, and uh, Rob would be speaking if not for the fact he was uh, he's just coming back from vacation, so I'm very happy to, to kind of walk you through uh, what's going on, what this is all about. So uh, the title though, Helping Entrepreneurs on the Road to Success, uh, is something that uh, when I get into the vision we'll talk about, um, and what what really is the next step for this valley, the Snow Valley Valley. So I apologize for the, uh, the colors, that looks a whole lot better on my screen. Um, if you look at the uh, societies, uh, you started out with an agrarian society, and uh, it was farming. And when you think of that, you really what you would do is you would use uh, initially animals and then machinery to magnify people's muscles. Uh, and then it was into uh, artisanship, development of trades. So people would go into guilds and, uh, and apprenticeships and basically learn how to do things. Uh, you can think of woodworking today or carpentry, uh, welding, other things. But they, they learn how to do things. And again, they'd be using implements that would allow them to, to you know, do their creative minds and ultimately uh, you know, create things uh, that people have thought of and talked talk to them about. And then there's the manufacturing age. Uh, this um, really initiated low-cost things for everybody. The Model T 
was unique in the U.S. It started out with efficiency and mass production. Uh, they wanted a car in every home. Uh, in Britain and other countries, when they had cars, it was only for the richest people. And, um, and then suburbia also came out as a result of that. Um, and, and Rob, you actually called this the uh, service society. I called the information age. I kind of grew up with the information age. Uh, if you think of uh, you know, a horse or an engine magnifying somebody's muscles, the computer and the internet was to magnify people's minds. And I think we get lost on that. I mean, I've uh, so got an old uh, encyclopedia set and others uh, have you know things in their house, and today that information you can get real time. You know, in spite of all the noise, our ability to engage in that is, is pretty huge right now. Um, so anyway, after the information age, uh, there's something that's going on right now that is probably the most dramatic change in manufacturing and creation that has happened in the last 30, 40 years, and that's what we're going to call the creative age. That's the ability to use our minds uh, to create something new. Uh, now again, Robert, it had this. Even, I'm going to look at your note here. Uh, welcome to the creative age, right? Uh, so basically, uh, there, if you think about it, um, I don't know if uh, everybody's age here, but I grew up in a club of Rome. We said, you know, we're going to run out of natural gas by 1999, run out of gasoline, you know, probably by 1998. I mean, it was a real uh, push that uh, things were limited. And a lot of creative folks, not just with fossil fuels, but renewables and others, said there's other things we can do. We don't have to be bound by the existing standards that somebody set up. And that's really the base of the creative age. And the Tesla is a good example of something that people thought that they couldn't do. In fact, GM launched the electric car 30 years before Tesla and then canceled it because they didn't think it was a viable, uh, a viable uh, business. But another thing that's new is crowdfunding. There's never been a case where uh, individuals could have access to capital if they have a good idea. I actually logged on to Kickstarter and looked at a number of things. So there's the obvious things you can think of, of new businesses. But somebody even said, I wanted to uh, make the world's best potato salad, would you donate? You got 55,000 people that are willing to donate. And he you know, had this big stadium and he built this great potato salad. And, and that, that, that's tongue in cheek trivial, but also shows that if you get an idea that enough people are willing to listen to, you get funding for it. And uh, when I actually presented EDC, there was a, they used the case of a little girl who wanted her uh, engineer father to make uh, Mickey Mouse pancakes. Being an engineer, he didn't just make Mickey Mouse pancakes, he got XY Potter with a squeezed bottle of ketchup and he would basically be able to scan pictures and make an Einstein pancake or uh, a dog pancake and things like that. And, and again, something so trivial, they put it on crowdfunding, and today you can actually go on and you can buy this thing where you can scan a picture and make a pancake that looks like it. Uh, the point isn't that that's a good prompt or not. The point is that if somebody can use a creative mind to come up with an idea and convince people that it's worthwhile, they'll fund fun. And, and when I think of the youth, when I think of folks on uh, driving on the commute every day, I think it's important that we communicate that. And that's really the purpose of the Innovation Center, is to communicate what's out there, what tools are out there, what abilities are out there. Now when it comes to small business, uh, I've got a lot of passion for that. I, I've seen a lot of great business growth. But when it comes to really what makes the country run, and should make Snoqualmie run, it's really private sector jobs and small businesses. Uh, basically 47.5, you know, half of all employees or in small businesses of less than 500 people. That's huge. And, and if you think about what I just talked about, about the age where people can create small businesses and crowdfunding, uh, the opportunity to, to do more is even, even better. And 1.9 million jobs are created by small businesses in 2015. Uh, again, Washington actually plays a very big part of that. And I think the Snoqualmie Valley uh, can really be an epicenter for innovation and small business creation if we just decide to do it. Uh, additionally, of the 1.9 million jobs, 1.1 um, million were smaller than 20 employees. And, and that really is what, uh, what we're looking for. And uh, you're talking about uh, Soho, in, in this case it was small home uh, or, or home office type businesses. That's basically less than 20, 19 and less. Um, again, I think this area is ripe for that because we've got all the talent and it's this great environment that we talked about. However, uh, again, this, this is Rob's slide, so the interesting uh, <laughs> slide with the railroad. Um, the, the thing is, you've got uh, yeah, more than half uh, of these businesses uh, fell. Uh, more than half of the small business created, they don't last five years. And uh, again, there's a lot of reason for that. I think some folks have a great idea, and they say, let me go after this, but they don't understand the balance sheet or cash flow. I, I, mean, I mean, there's some real principles that uh, I think with a little education, people can stay out of trouble when they start the small business. And uh, there is, you want enthusiasm, but there is a little bit of knowledge before you make the leap, so you're not one of these, uh, these crash small businesses. And one of the other things, though, is it takes a while. There's a period of time in development 
uh, an introduction of whatever it is, a product or service that somebody has before it actually takes off and you're sustainable. And that's really the most vulnerable time. Uh, and what if we could create an innovation center that would not only teach people how to do this, but allow them in this period of time when they're most vulnerable to, uh, to be able to digest and get the team, get mentors to actually succeed. So, so that's the idea. Now this, uh, and also another picture of this uh, we're all aware of. Uh, we had a couple innovation meetings, one recently last month in Segello Cellars, and, uh, and some uh, lady who's an IP attorney uh, actually came to it. She heard about it and thought it was kind of exciting. She came there and she goes, you know, this feels like indentured servitude. You know, it's like I've got to go to my work, I've got my insurance that I've got to do. And uh, another conversation we had was somebody called it, you know, feeding the beast, right? You've got your, your student loan and your mortgage and your kids and one that you've got to do that. And folks, folks don't, aren't aware if they pick their head up, there's actually other things they can do. They don't necessarily have to do this. And this, you know, going on to uh, Seattle and other places to work is, is a great honorable thing. But there are other options. And for those who are interested, we're going to show them what those other options are. Now, uh, Rob put this picture in, so I appreciate it. So this is me, as you can tell. This is Dr. Lee uh, from PLU. This is Steve Congas. Uh, he's an edu education, self described education advocate and a self described serial entrepreneur. This is Rob Watton, I think, who, who you all know. This is Shafin Honor, who's head of the Seattle uh, group of uh, Boy Scouts. And uh, this is Harry Roberts. Uh, who is a big guy in Starbucks, actually, he's drinking a Frappuccino, he, that was his idea. Uh, he's got a lot of interesting things. Now we uh, actually presented this, the picture was taken at the Chamber, I think it was in May, a couple months ago. Uh, but again, we talked about the Innovation Center, of like, if you get mentors, and you get the right team together uh, to go communicate to youth, communicate to folks that are on the road all the time, that uh, we can do some magic. We can do some magic here in the Snoqualmie Valley. So, one thing, and uh, you really got to give credit to Rob, who's an alumni of Pacific Lutheran University, that we have that is unique, and I, and I look forward also to see if we can do more with the high school, is that uh, the Pacific uh, Lutheran University, and, and Dr. Lee, uh, yeah, Lee is, am I saying right, it's Dr. Lee? Yeah. Yes. That basically, that uh, uh, they will grab some ideas that come out of the Innovation Center and try to wrap business plans around them. So, twice a year, their students get together and say, here's some projects I want to work on. And usually they're abstract projects. Uh, like, uh, you know, how would I run a, a business in Alaska that uh, you know, does outdoor services or something like that. And, and it's an abstract thing and they try to put it all together. Here, they're offering to take real ideas that come out of the Innovation Center and, and get their grad students <coughs> to wrap a business plan around. And one of the first things you ask them to do actually is look at a business plan around the Innovation Center. Uh, so this is a huge asset and it's also a differentiator. I don't know uh, I did a research, we did research with 55 innovation centers in the area, and I don't know of anyone that actually partners with an MBA program the way we're doing with the Pacific Lutheran University. That, you gotta thank Rob for setting that up. And, uh, and so he's, he's got some notes here um, on the high school thing, that uh, another statistic is only 25% of our youth will complete a four year degree by age of 25. Um, you, you know, it's funny, I talked about my initial motivation uh, and it, it kind of blew me away when I started asking the questions uh, to the community center and others of um, uh, finding out about the pressure the youth are under. And it blew me away how much pressure our youth are under here today. And some folks say, you know, it, our kids are almost taught that if they're not college bound, they're a failure in life. And to think of somebody who's 16 years old and thinking that way, that's, that's, that's ridiculous. Uh, so one, you want to make sure that if, if they get to college, they can succeed, but also there's so much things that you can do where you don't need a college degree, and for some reason, I think I think we lost that. I, I don't know about but you guys. When I was growing up, it was it was honorable to be a welder, to be woodworking, to be a carpenter, to be other things, and there were a lot of good uh, other jobs you can do. And there's a lot of things, even technical jobs you can do, where you don't need the college diploma and you don't need to be saddled with a loan. And again, I don't think folks realize that. Uh, so one of the other purposes of the innovation center is to show the opportunities and even give some education, short-term education, all that you can do. And uh, I met a kid uh, that was, uh, uh, Stephen and I actually went to a uh, hacker space in Red Bar. And we're sitting there, a lot of grizzled guys are like, oh, we can, we can peel the layers off this chip and we can you know, pin and, and get the, read the firmware. Uh, so it was one of those kind of weird things. And there's a kid behind me and I looked at him and I said, uh, uh, you know, what, what are you doing here? And he says, well, he says, uh, I'm not sure this is the right place here for video uh, game program. And he's, spins the laptop around and he shows me what he was doing. So he wrote this program that uh, had this little uh, uh, icon going on a figure eight and it was, you know, already he was running this for me and I go, oh, that's great. I said, where are you going to school? And he goes, well, he goes, I'm in high school. He 
he's a, I'm a high school senior. And, uh, and I said, well, where are you going to go to college? And not, not college about. He goes, I hate the English stuff. You read a paragraph, you've got to write a sentence. Because I just, I just hate that stuff. He goes, this, this is what I love to do. And I go, you know, that's the perfect kid. That is the perfect kid to, uh, to get involved in something like this and understand the education, what you can do to, in today's environment, uh, where you don't necessarily have to go the college path. Um, or if you do go the college path, you can get a head start with the things you want to do. Uh, interestingly enough, um, this was a room full of adults, bigger than this, maybe twice his size. And uh, Stephen and I were going to leave, and this kid got up, he cut, cut a quarter across, you know, with all the adults, he grabs her and he goes, hey, whatever you guys are doing down there, I want to be a part. Uh, and again, I think, I think what we were saying just really resonates with a few people. So, so why, why support the Innovation Center? Uh, so this, I, I pulled in a couple of slides I presented uh, before. Uh, we all know we live in a fantastic place to live and work. I mean, I, you, know, you wake up every day and you just look at this view and you go, this, this is a slice of heaven. You know, I mean, if you want to make your stand of a place to make it viable, this is the place to do it. Uh, however, th there are some problems. We talked about the congestion. We talked about the folks who get on the road. Uh, you know, when I was at Space Labs, there were folks who would carpool from Bothell and it'd be uh, for an operations thing, and they would get there um, you know, just need to get jacked up with coffee and caffeine before they can start their work because they're on the road two hours sometimes. Uh, and then after you had a long day where you work more than 12 hours, they'd have to go back and do it all again. I mean, it's, it's a tough thing uh, for some folks uh, with the congestion. Uh, it's also interesting in housing. Uh, you talk to a lot of professionals uh, or a lot of uh, business owners here, and they struggle to hire people uh, because uh, the folks that, uh, you know, that live here, they want to work uh, for high-paying jobs to live here, uh, they wind up driving, and uh, the stats, uh, I mean, I think Evan Robson, something like 6,000 people get in the car and they leave the city, uh, the Snoqualmie area, every day, and something like 4,000 come in. So we've, we've got an imbalance. And the idea of the Innovation Center is move the needle, right? <coughs> figure out how to educate folks to move the needle. And uh, I've mentioned this a lot, and it's got the first 11 slides, is this really is a transformative time in history. There's never a case where you can take an idea, sketch it out, and give it to somebody, or go to a, a makerspace and create something. And when I first presented this to the city council about a year ago, it was like eyes glazed over. I talked about the pancake pot, and I just don't think it resonated. Uh, so rather than talk about that, let's talk about you know the things that we do in the city that are good. And there's really four categories that the Saver Snow Palmy taught me about. That if we use a creative mind, uh, we can use this uh, transformative time in history. One is uh, food and farm products, and a lot of really cool stuff going on there. Uh, second one is independent businesses, and that rolls in high tech, but also rolls in a lot of other things uh, that we wouldn't think of. Another one is arts and heritage. I mean, uh, there was an interesting, uh, interesting conversation uh, I had about a guy who's working on a, a, a film on Bigfoot, which I thought was kind of off the wall. The more you start talking about it, I realized that there's an interesting, quirky personality here that you could go ahead and grab on that uh, for arts and heritage. And then the fourth which uh, for Nate and, and Rob, you recently came out as outdoor recreation. That might even be the biggest one of all. If you think of new businesses around the area, outdoor recreation is huge, not just for events and service, but also for actually the equipment. Uh, and so one of the things that the Innovation Center is doing is use this transformative time in history, look at businesses that make sense and go after them. Now the last topic, and, and it's a little controversial, people kind of go back when, when, I, when I mentioned this, but I think it's important to mention, is I, I believe conversations that, that if we're not careful, we could lose a third of our youth. Uh, the kids who aren't college bound, uh, you know, they, they're, they're getting into trouble. And uh, the pressure that they feel, uh, you know, you really see in, in a lot of areas that, that, I mean, some kids are just losing hope. And if it happens, just a few houses up from where we live, which is one of the most fantastic areas in the world, um, then you know that there's, there's something we can do better. And so that is one of the other, you know, things beneficial to others, and not just beneficial to those uh, and the indentured servitude, but also beneficial to the youth of giving them uh, an additional uh, adult mentored area to show them that they can use their creative minds, their godlike creative minds, regardless of whether they go to college or not, to create something new. So the vision, hopefully it's, it's apparent for now, is to enable the creatives in the Snoqualmie Valley. And, and let me just pitch all this out because I have the film there. So the creatives are those folks that are retirees, those folks that are hobbyists, which seems kind of obvious, they have some ideas. Uh, but it's also those folks that are, say, uh, 30 to 55 that are doing the, the commute, and they may have an idea. Uh, and they may uh, you know, have an idea on what they want to do for food, what they want to do for uh, outdoor rec, and, but there's no place to do it because they're, you know, they're feeding the bees. Uh, and then our youth. Uh, I think there's a lot of education we can do at very young ages uh, to really encourage folks to understand what's out there, what abilities are out there. Uh, 
uh, the purpose of the Innovation Center is education and wealth creation in local business startup. Show them what can happen. And, uh, and I'm hoping that over the next year uh, that we'll have some successes we can point to you uh, that when they come into the Innovation Center, they say, oh, and oh, by the way, here's a couple that are already launched that have, have happened in the last year. And, and the values, uh, again, we, we met as, as a small team on this, this may evolve, but I think it's worth talking about. One is community. Uh, we're not just talking about let's educate folks if they go work in, in big jobs in Seattle. That, that might happen, but the real idea is create small businesses here in the community. Make Snow Valley, and uh, by that we include uh, Snoqualmie and North Bend and even the Duval and Carnation eventually, or maybe not Snoqualmie and North Bend. But, but we basically create uh, this being an epicenter of innovation. People like, something cool is happening there. You know, this group really looks at their community and does something special. An entrepreneurial passion. Uh, you know, entrepreneurial is one of those words that a, a lot of folks use, but really it's uh, being able to take an idea and you add enough value such that you're creating wealth. And, uh, and that is something that um, I think a little bit of education needs to be done. And again, that's, that's the purpose of the Innovation Center. Uh, innovation experimentation, just to pause on that point a bit. Uh, there are very few in, in my history of uh, cool designs, particularly their complex designs, that came out the shoot designed perfectly the first time. Or when you do an execution of a plan that you've never done before, uh, where you don't have you know day to day problems that you've got to go solve, you've got to do creative thinking, and you got to you realize well this didn't work, let me try something else. Uh, that is also something so critical to communicate, uh, not just to adults but also to our youth. Is it's okay? Uh, I mean again I've talked to these kids and you know, some of them are like oh my god if I, if I fail my physics test my life is over right? And experimentation isn't like that. There's, there's an element of resilience where you get to try something. And if it doesn't work, you take a step back and, and you learn from it and you try something else. So that's really what we mean by that. It's not just creative ideas. It's also the ability to have resilience and keep trying. You can keep your nose on where you're trying to go, but to understand you may not get there at first try. And again, I think that is so important. And then the cottage industry focus, this is what I call Soho. Think of a less than, less than 20 people, small businesses. So that is the values that we say, you know, in this environment, we can do this as well as anybody. And if we have a little bit of success on doing this, it really moves the needle on all our pressing problems. Whether it be the house, it would be the community, whether it be our youth, whether it be the hobbyists or the folks that uh, you know wanted to try their own thing. So I think it is a, a noble goal that we're doing. Uh, we've worked very hard the last few months to make this a reality. Uh, right now, we've got a, a powerhouse board uh, on the Innovation Center. Uh, Rob actually is the registered agent. Uh, the board includes the uh, CEO of the hospital, uh, Tom Parker. It includes the uh, principal of Two Rivers School, uh, Rhonda Schmidt. Uh, Rob, I think I think it'd be good if we could we could get you in here as well. Uh, I mentioned uh, uh, Rob. Um, uh, who, am I uh, who am I missing on, on the board? Shelley oh, Patterson. Oh, uh, uh, yes. Uh, and, er, and, uh, PhD in business management, Shelley Patterson, and former council member of the uh, Snoqualmie is uh, she's volunteered. Uh, to be a big uh, member as well, and even to, uh, to have a, a more magical cheese on the board. And then Council Member Catherine Ross from uh, uh, the City Council of Snoqualmie is on the board. Uh, so, so it's very good. And when we presented this at uh, the chamber two months ago, it was the picture up there of us guys. And uh, there was a gal, Alicia comes up to me, she says, you know, we would get together and we would write a check. She goes, but you, you've got to get some women on this board. I'm like, look, this isn't the board. We're, we're trying to trying to form this together. And so it's worth talking that, yeah, we actually, between Shelley and Catherine um, and Rhonda, in addition to Rob, it is in the top, it, it's, a, it's a powerhouse board that I think really fits with what Snoqualmie Valley is. And Rob, again, there's, there's open positions. I think it'd be good to, to get you involved as well. But ultimately, um, the idea of trying to communicate is uh, it educates folks on how to create wealth. Uh, and it really targets the small business creation of Snoqualmie Valley. So, uh, I, I do this just because I, I enjoy it, and I, I really like the movie, so I'm dating myself here. Um, if you remember, Puget Sound, actually, they filmed a movie in the mid-80s, uh, <laughs> an officer and a gentleman, and to me, it wasn't the romantic aspect of it. I was a cadet at the time when this movie came out. It was the, the guy dogging out the cadet, Zach Mayo. And, uh, and he's, in this particular uh, film capture that I captured, he's screaming at him, right? Quit, you gotta quit. And uh, he's like, what are you doing here? What are you putting up with all this crap? Because he you know, screwed up and he's for the weekend getting knocked out by the DI. But again, that's the part that really, that really did resonate with me and I've been in that position. Anyway, Zach Mayo, when he's asked why do this, he goes, I want to fly jets. And, and, and Foley, uh, the, uh, the drill sergeant, screams out, my grandmother wants to fly jets. It's like, you know, 
that's not what this is about. This is about character. This is about what you're all about. And, and when you hear words like entrepreneurship or innovation, everybody says, oh yeah, I want, to I want to be innovation, or I want to be an entrepreneur. But that's like I want to fly jets. Everybody wants to do that. It, it's really about the character of the experimentation we talked about, the small focus, of the focus on really showing the folks the environment that really makes the innovation. And then the last thing he said before he got, he got to stay in the program was, I've got nowhere else to go. And, and I would argue that point as well. This is a place worth making your stand, right here in the Stokomami Valley. There's a lot of folks, I personally had a lot of opportunity to take big jobs, to leave the area and say, you know, this, this is the place that's worth making our stand. And I think a lot of folks go that way. And, uh, and some of them know how and some of them don't. And this is the part to do that. So again, the point for the Stokomami Valley Innovation Center is to make Stokomami Valley an epicenter of innovation. So, uh, yeah, I don't know if everybody likes this. I just enjoy that, so I show that. So, thanks for indulging me there. So, what's going to happen? So, the Umqua Community Center, which is hooked to the bank uh, next to, to Rob, becomes an Umqua Innovation Center. And, and this, this is a room. So, you've got a, a room with a ceiling mounted projector. You've got a lot of mentors that will gather there. And uh, there's already some initial discussions that need to take place. They educate the youth, the commuters, and retirees on the tools. So, this is a picture. Of a, of a school actually pulled off the web of somebody looking at a 3D printer. There are tabletop uh, creative tools, such as 3D printers, such as things. And, and when I heard the Joe Dockery and, and what they're doing in the high school, I was just like, that, that is spectacular. Uh, and, and it's, again, something that um, there's a lot of things around here that folks have that are nonprofits that we could use. If somebody has something that they you know, can't be using at the high school, which, which I hope a lot of it happens there, but they want to have to do something anyway, uh, we could go ahead and list those uh, efforts and those uh, those resources so that we can show kids and adults how to create and curate product and business ideas. Uh, so the word curate, uh, just to pause on a second, uh, uh, one of the guys that uh, was up at the chamber meeting, Harry, says there's no bad ideas. And that's kind of the result. So a lot of guys have off-the-wall ideas. I don't know about you, but a, a pancake bot was never something I would personally think is a product. So I pointed it out to say that we don't uh, you know, judge the ideas, we curate them. So if we can find a mentor that says, I can help you with that, then, then that's curated is we'll go ahead and support that. And if somebody has an idea, you know, that, that we don't necessarily have a mentor to support, and then basically, uh, it's, it's not necessarily a bad idea, so we want to communicate that. It's just something we, we need to find a mentor for. So the curation is the decision isn't on good or bad, but it's on where we can link mentors up to go help them out. Because that's really what it's going to take when somebody has a, an open-ended idea. Does that make sense? Okay. And then uh, we, we talked about the Pacific Lutheran uh, University Partnership. Uh, we've got, uh, this is uh, myself and Rob, uh, Dr. Lee, uh, and the Pacific Lutheran University. I mean, basically the idea that um, they can take real, not just case studies, but real business ideas and wrap business plans around them, again, is something I haven't heard of anybody doing. I think that's, I think that's very, very cool. And, um, and they're looking for a couple ideas. We've we kind of lined up. Uh, for what's going to happen in September, uh, which is going to be a, a business plan on uh, basically the Innovation Center. Uh, but ultimately, twice a year, in September and February, they're going to take ideas and try to wrap business plans around it. We're going to the opportunity. Uh, we started off with saying we'll do two or three, uh, but they possibly take big more. I, I really think it's going to be a working relationship about how we get the draw that and make that happen. So uh, thank you very much for your indulgence this morning, but welcome to the Creative Age. Uh, this is really the point where we get to use our minds uh, to do something great, and why a palpable need uh, that really benefits all concerned here in the Snoqualmie Valley. I mean, I can't think of anything more important, and I'm obviously biased in that front. And, and the Innovation Center absolutely uh, meets that need, and it helps the youth, uh, it helps local jobs, it helps resiliency, all the things that are key, and it encourages the Rotary to get involved as it can in supporting uh, the Innovation Center. And uh, so we talked about the Powerhouse Board, I, I, and Rob, I don't know if you wanted to add any more to that, but ultimately there's, there's going to be a lot of work to, to get the uh, curriculum and get, get things going with that. Uh, and in the meantime, just very briefly, uh, I actually am the head of the Snow Valley uh, Dream Factory, which we're getting off the ground in parallel. And we have to separate the two uh, because you can't have somebody uh, ultimately uh, making a profit in an idea within a, a nonprofit. It kind of goes against the whole thing. Uh, so ultimately, uh, we're going to try to show success of, of ideas that we've already been collecting over the next year while well, this is working. And uh, that's also a differentiator of the Innovation Center is that uh, most Innovation Centers, they give you a space or whatnot, uh, but we're actually uh, affiliated the Innovation Center 
nonprofit and the for profit dream factory in that uh, we're actually going to show successes, business successes. To me, that's the one thing that is missing from a lot of innovation centers around here. So, questions? questions. Wait, Rob, did you want to add anything that, uh, that I missed? <clears throat> Probably the, the, the biggest takeaway um, for the, the Rotary Club is that we have a, um, a partnership with Two Rivers School um, that we're working with Rhonda Schmidt on. And the idea is to take the kids that are in the middle, the kids that are struggling, that at-risk student, that where school just doesn't, you know, I'm going to school because they make me to go to school. We shouldn't have that mindset. We want to be able to connect the two. What you're learning in school matters in life, right? It, it really makes an impact. So um, Rhonda and Steve and, and uh, Luke and I have been talking about ways we can make that happen and, and we're actually figuring out how can we involve about 80 kids a week um, through the Innovation Center and make it part of the curriculum and we're going to give them the support that Boy Scout Council, Chief Seattle Council has had a hundred year experience of, of giving experiential learning, has a wonderful program through Explorers and uh, we're, we have that ready to go. Um, so we've got to just figure out how to make those pieces come together. It's been a whirlwind because this has been going on now for about six months of trying to put all the pieces together, but it's an exciting time. And, and uh, Steve and I have talked a little bit about how to get the club involved um, in that effort um, working with Two Rivers. So we'll, uh, today is really the introduction so that we can have that ongoing discussion and we've got about six weeks left before school starts, right, Rob? Uh, so we've got a lot of uh, heavy lifting to do, but the pieces are there, but we just need to, to have more people know about what we're doing and grab a hold somewhere um, to, to be a part of this. Rob, feel free to uh, explain yeah. a little bit what you and I have been talking about as far as how Rotary, how you'd like to see Rotary involved. Right, so, <clears throat> so we're starting um, an Explorer post and it's going to involve Two Rivers students. All the cost has been taken care of. Uh, we're going to allow the kids, um, or give the kids an opportunity to uh, go on field trips. One of the, the great things with the Scout Council is that we've got the president of Alaska Airlines. We've got um, the resources um, from throughout the Seattle business community that we can plug um, our students in with. But we don't want to start with the kids that are going to be most likely to get a scholarship, the most one likely to succeed. We're going to take the kids that are struggling, and that's, that's the big difference. And some of the people that are involved with it, they don't have a college degree. You don't need a college degree to be successful, and that's part of the message that Luke is getting out there. And I think the other piece, if, if you're that 35 to 55-year-old with an idea, we want it to be a safe place to say, hey, you know, that idea has been rattling around in your head. Come bring it to the Innovation Center. It's kind of like a pre-incubator uh, situation. You don't have to have a business. You don't have to have a business plan, but we'll give you the resources to help you put that together. So on that, I, I, I've had two ideas in my life that turned into successful companies, right? And they weren't. I didn't, I wasn't able to do it because so somebody else got the company. Yeah. yeah, and so I come to the innovation center. I got this idea, but I'm not like an idea for an app. Say, I'm not a programmer. I don't know anything about apps. I just know what it does. Do you take that idea if you like, and then you develop it? And so, me, uh, so actually, it would be. There's a mentor, a good guy actually, Stephen. You know, be one of the guys who say, "Wait, I love programming. I love how to do this. Let me understand it." And he would either work with you uh, to go ahead and develop that app, uh, or pull people in to help you do that app because again, he's got a lot of passion around things like that. And uh, while doing that, there'd be uh, some additional uh, discussion on, um, you know, can you make money on this thing? I mean, there's three criteria for. I mean, you know, like there's three criteria that we talked about for a successful business idea. So one is the person's got to have a passion for it. So if you've got an idea for an app, usually um, there's a reason you've got a passion for that, that app. 
the second is, though, that it's, uh, we call it a secret sauce. I brought up a different call. What is your secret sauce? You've got to have some differentiator that in a niche or something is, is you're doing something unique and that is ultimately the best in, in whatever it is you're doing. And then the third, and, and this is something that, you know, is important. It's not just a, a moral solution. It has to be an economic solution. It's why will people reach in their pocket for businesses, uh, you know, write a check for that idea? How can you make money in that idea? So those three things, passion, secret sauce, and, uh, and people want to pay for it, uh, hooked up to a mentor, that, that would be where the innovation center could grab that and say how you could go do it. Uh, now just one of the things that we got pretty pointedly asked, uh, I think it was May or April when we gave a conversation was, well how do I protect the idea? And, and, and that's where you would go into, you know, you go out of the innovation center into the green factories. At that point, uh, we, we wrap uh, some legal stuff around it, we protect the idea and make sure that we can go ahead and uh, uh, take the next step. Did I answer your question? Yeah. Um, but so, what, so, for instance, one of the apps I just read that I was trying to develop, but I'm not a developer, I just had the idea. Actually, it was in the Seattle Business Journal. Somebody else did it. <laughs> but it, you're not going to make money on it. It was uh, an app that homeless people held a chip and you could give them money, you know, to pay for certain foods, you know, and, and uh, services. Uh, okay. You're not going to make money okay. on it. You're right, right. I was thinking products. See, there, yeah. there, is, there are good nonprofit ideas. I didn't mean to suggest other ones. Yeah, so, but, but, so something like that, you know, I don't want to have anything. I just want the, I have the idea. I want to hand it over. You make money on it. Great. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I do. I do. I, that, you know, I mean, um, again, the community value of Snow Valley businesses, um, I, I, don't, I don't know where to find a mentor for that. But, uh, but maybe, maybe, I mean, I think what uh, uh, the youth trails, or trail youth, I think what they did is spectacular. I mean, an idea like that, I think you would get a lot of support from them. So I, I don't know if I answered your no, question, but hopefully, uh, yes. there, there, there needs to be a, a, a Snow Valley mentor linked to the idea to, to really take it forward. And, and to me, that's, that's what people go on. So, Rob, were you talking about the same explorers that were here last week? The explorers that you're talking about? That Police explorers. No, two totally no. different okay. Police explorers is part of the explorer program, and uh, explorers is is really career exploration. Okay. And so we have it in, in police, fire, um, first responders, but there's also another one that um, that we'll be working with, and that's the business explorer. Uh, that is a post. It's yeah, it's a separate post to it, right? With the career specialization. Do you have a question? I was just going to um, respond to Jonas's uh, or question about his application idea. And I would give him two words of caution. The first is go see the movie The Social Network to find out uh, who really got remunerated for the idea. And secondly, if you're going to come up with, if you have an idea that requires talents and resources that you don't have, then contract with someone who has those talents and ideas and get them to sign an NDA. <laughs> so imagine that the two brothers who had the idea for what turned out to be Facebook had gone to Zuckerberg and said, hey, I'd like you to sign this NDA and work with us on developing a prototype for this concept of a social network. If they had had that NDA in place, then they would have had a legal basis to claim ownership of the company, but they lost all ownership because Zuckerberg took the idea and ran with it on his own. Yeah. And we actually have, one of the first things we did to resolve that issue that came a couple months ago is we actually uh, got some many games and executed them. Any other questions? Thanks, guys. All right. Have Excellent. As we always do uh, for our speakers, we uh, we want to donate 150 pounds of food to uh, Northwest Harvest in your name uh, in its appreciation. Um, I have one of those cards right now, so uh, here it is. Um, any other business before we uh, bring the meeting to closure today?